Hey, baby. Hello. Can you say hello? No, you just want to run away from me. You just want to run away from me. But look at the camera. I know you hate cameras. Okay, 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 baby. Okay. Yes, thank you. Step on me. Okay. Hello, this is part two of making Kakegurui's Yumeko Jabami's uniform and part one of making the jacket. If you haven't seen the the real part one of the skirt and the button-up shirt, um, I will link that in the description and up top. <laughs> so this next few videos are going to focus on making the jacket, which is a lot of tailoring. And this video specifically focuses on making the mock-up and going through the mock-up fitting and then going through uh, making welt pockets and the first fitting after like getting darts and all the pieces together. So my first step is obviously just patterning and then from there I'll be making the mock-up. Um, but you know, first pattern. So let's go do that. Okay, so I've got my paper. Um, I have like nice grid paper, but I've got my measurements and I have all of my tailoring notes, oops, sorry. All of my tailoring notes from school. All right, thanks for your help, Molly. Okay, so these are all my notes from when I took tailoring in grad school um, and it includes pretty much everything you could need to know. I've got how to make pockets, how to make button, I mean buttonholes, not buttons, no, it doesn't tell you how to make buttons. Um, like what you do when you first have the pa uh, fabric, um, how to do pants, how to make a jacket slopers, how to cut things and just lots of stuff. So this is what I'm going to be using um, to draft my pattern and to follow through my step-by-step. -step. Um, so I'm gonna make this like it's a man's, man's jacket, you know. Um, there are some difference for like ladies tailoring, but because this is like a pretty standard school blazer, uh, it'll, it'll be a little bit more fitted, but essentially I'm gonna be doing the same thing as if this was like a man's jacket. Okay. So, and it kind of looks like she has a princess line, but there's no seam up here. Um, it looks like it comes to the top of the pocket where about this one does. Um, so I will, I am just going to take a dart um, all the way through the bottom though. I don't think that's super necessary, but we're going to do it because that's what her looks like. Cool. So that's our whole thing. Um, I'm going to double check some of these darts because I'm betting that I'm going to need to take the waist in a little bit more. That one's work quite a bit actually so maybe we'll smooth that out just okay so now that I've got my pattern made I'm just gonna check it by pinning it directly to my dress form um got my pins here uh and it's all paper so like you know it's not gonna be perfect but it should give me a good idea whether I'm in I'm going in the right direction at all. <laughs> this way, it's like, okay, so basically this whole thing is just too big. It needs to be smaller. This is probably about where it should be sitting. Um, I don't know what was wrong with this pattern. So like, if I do this, then the front is really good. Um, what I'm betting I have to do is just take out a whole bunch right here. Um, so I'm going to do that really quick. Okay, so I just took a one inch or a half inch tuck into the paper. So that took out a full inch for me already. Um, that is definitely helping, but I still think that this is not sitting super well. But that is fitting a lot better now. Like just the measurement wise, I think that this whole thing needs to come in maybe an inch up top and then scoop in a little bit more there. Okay, so that's definitely closer, but I could probably still even do a little more. I think that this is going to need to start as well. Yeah, and then once I get that like that, that's looking a lot better. Come up a little bit more and even stick that right in there. I would like 
that to come up here. Right off of here. Okay. And that looks pretty good. It's not perfect, obviously, and this is also made of paper, so, you know, it is not gonna lay super perfectly because it's something that needs to be kind of formed and molded as to making happens. Um, but I think this is pretty good. This is a good starting point and I will be able to work on my mock-up now. Just from looking at it, we're gonna need a little bit more space in the bust just cause it needs to overlap more. And then especially in the waist, um, right now it's kind of like, it's cutting away a lot right here. I don't really need it to be a belly shirt. It just needs to cut away about here at my hip. And then it's got some like these drag lines, which I'm not a huge fan of. So we'll have to fix that as well. Um, it might be fixed if I just let out some of the stuff in the back here. Right now I'm looking um, into my phone right here to see where it seems to want to lay. And it seems like with the seam allowance out, that seems fine. So let's pin that into place. So then now that we've got the back better situated, it seems like maybe that one of the main issues is that the the shoulder is lifting the whole thing up too much. Um, so if I lower it, that might help put the waist at the right place. Cause right now it's like kind of getting the waist to be here as opposed to down here where my actual waist is. That does make it so that this functions more like it's supposed to. So that's like a really good thing to check first um, is you might feel like all of your horizontal measurements are off when really they're only off because they're not situated in the right spot on your body. Because basically everything was riding up because there wasn't enough uh, space in the shoulder. Um, so I let everything out an inch and that dropped everything by half an inch on the front and the back, which is now letting everything sit at the actual waistline. I could maybe even let the shoulder seam out a little bit more. Uh, if you can see where that dip in is, that's about right here, whereas my natural waist is a little bit lower. So I'm gonna let out the shoulders just a little bit more and we'll see how that works. Okay, I think that actually fixed most of my problems um, because now that I fixed the shoulder seam, um, this is actually sitting at my natural waist instead of a half inch above it, which is then letting this close. The whole thing is too long though um, because if you look at hers, it ends probably around where her high hip is. Right now it's ending around my low hip. So if we tuck all of this under here, that looks pretty close. And then it stays closed for a little bit and then opens up. And I think that's pretty good actually. And I also wanna look at the, the collar. Maybe going like this would be better. And then that's like a nice point. Um, it does come pretty low on her. It comes to about her armpit. Uh, so that seems to be hitting around about the right place um say her pocket is about right here and then as for the arms eye it's a little bit past my shoulder point but i think that's okay because it is a blazer and her sh shoulders are pretty square and also that that collar it feels like it is hitting below where the seam line is so that's good so yeah i think that the fit's pretty good um the main issues that i'll need to fix are the top shoulder seams maybe the side back seams and then i'm gonna bring the hem up and everything else seems fine i like it won't be a belly shirt when i'm actually wearing it um i'll be wearing a pleated skirt obviously um but yeah i think i think that's good First thing to do when working with wool is check which is the right side of the fabric and also which is the right direction since all wool will have a nap. Then to prep the wool for cutting, I'm steaming it more than pressing it so it has a chance to shrink down. I'm fanning it after each pass to dry and cool it a little faster. Hmm. 
no. <laughs> so cute, baby. Oh, I see. You're just gonna... You did it. Can I... Can I... Thank you. <laughs> what are you doing, baby? You're just gonna... You're just gonna lie here. Alrighty. Okay, um... I have gotten most of my pieces cut out. While I was doing that, I realized that I did not make a pattern for the facing or for the little strip that's on like the outer edge of her jacket. Um, so I went ahead and did that. This is the original pattern here. And then from that, I traced off a facing pattern. Um, so that is basically just the part of the pattern that is to the center front of the dart um, will be the facing and that will also be the part of the collar that turns back so you'll see the facing when the lapel turns back um, and then for the lining because the facing covers the first half the lining will cover the outer half of this front piece um, so the facing and the lining will seam together to make basically like the inner part of the front of the jacket so that's the facing and the lining covered and then in addition to that there are a lot of like internal parts to a jacket if you're familiar with tailoring at all you probably have heard the terms pad stitching um, and like a canvas so I also came up with a pattern for that and the canvas usually extends um, all the way down the center front of the jacket and then over a little bit um, and then into the side seam um, and I wanted that to go because Originally the small like side piece that I had was is meant to be part of the front piece. I treated that as though it was just part of it and this will extend past that piece into the side seam to keep that all smooth. There's a kind of complicated process for the dart in the canvas um, and it's different from the dart in the fabric because canvas is a lot stiffer so it do we don't want like a fish dart basically which is like the two-pointed dart we want something that will end in a straight line um, so I followed uh, it's like classic tailoring techniques um, by something Cabrera I'll post a link to it um, in the description but it goes over the technique for how to cut a dart that originally looks like that into a dart that looks like this um, so you can have kind of a smoother front for your canvas. So this will be my canvas um, layer uh, and that can also be called French canvas or Hymo uh, depending on where you're looking for it. Um, and then the last little pattern piece that I have is for the horsehair canvas. Um, so a jacket gets three layers uh, inside of the typical outer fashion and the inner lining layer. Um, you have the the large canvas layer which is the softer canvas and then you have a smaller reinforcement layer uh, made out of hair canvas and hair canvas is called hair canvas because it literally has uh, strips uh, not strips like it has hairs from a horse's tail running through it um, on the cross length grain and then the uh, the warp grain is uh, either like linen or cotton and there's also wool ones um, so that it's really soft going around the body but it's very stiff going up and down the body um, so that gets cut of this like really little piece um, and my grain for that is a little bit different normally the grain kind of would go this way on a men's jacket but because I'm trying to fill in the hollow space that you kind of get next to like the boob in the armpit <laughs> I'm trying to fill it out more this direction then this direction uh, so that's why my grain is going kind of sideways like that see that's two layers of the three that I mentioned and then the last layer um, is a flannel layer which then goes closest to the body to protect the body from the kind of pokiness of the horse hair um, so 
That will also be made with this pattern. It'll just be extended a bit past the horsehair because it really only needs to be a little bit light, larger. Um, and the canvas and horsehair don't get a seam allowance because they are kept raw. What I will do is I will extend along this side um, just so that when I am shaping everything, if this ends, comes up a little bit short, I'll have enough space for that. Hi, baby. So what I've done so far um, is I've cut out all of the outer wool layers. I've cut the facing layers. I have ordered lining, so I'm still waiting on that to come in the mail, and then I'll be able to cut all my lining layers. Um, and then I've also cut this strip for the front, the very center front of the jacket where hers has a black strip. Um, and for that, all I did, um, I didn't have to make a new pattern for that or anything. What I did is I just traced off the front edge of this jacket pattern and then go in one inch um, and then do a seam allowance on either side. Uh, today I'm going to be working on pockets. So I'm going to go through how I make welt pockets. Um, and it seems kind of complicated, but I promise it's not as complicated. Um, and she's got only welt pockets, I think. Okay, no, yeah, she definitely, she has welt pockets. <laughs> she has three welt pockets. Um, normally, men's jackets have like a flat pocket on the lower pockets, but hers doesn't. Um, it's got three like small welt pockets, one um, at the top of the breast and then two closer to the hip. Um, so I'll be going over how I do that. Um, I'm probably not gonna make them very large because it's a costume, it doesn't need to be super functional. Um, and no one gives women large pockets anyways. Hello, what are you doing? All right, bye-bye. Um, so this was the book I was talking about, um, Roberto Cabrera Classic Tailoring Techniques for Menswear. Yeah, so that is my goal for today, is to get all the pockets done. I don't have Silesia, which is normally used for pocketing, um, or pocketing fabric, um, and those are used because they're kind of a really tight weave uh, that doesn't let sharp objects poke through. I don't have that. It's not gonna really be a functional pocket, so it doesn't super matter. Um, I'll probably just use some quilting cotton because that's what I've got. Before I sew in any of the pockets even, I'm gonna have to get this front strip on and the darts sewn in. So I will see you when that is done. I have one pocket three and a half inches wide by half an inch tall and two pockets four and a half inches wide by half an inch tall. For simplicity, I'll just be giving measurements based on the larger pockets since those are closer to standard jackets. First, cut a piece of woven interfacing on the cross grain four and a half inches by one and three eighths inch. Draw a line 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom edge. This is where the welt will be stitched to the jacket. Mark a quarter inch at opposite corners, then trim away at an angle. This gives the welt a slant. For the smaller pocket, I used 1 eighth of an inch instead. I cut three strips of fabric each, 5 eighths of an inch taller and at least 3 quarters of an inch wider than the fusible pieces. Here I'm measuring the depth of the pocket, then based on this measurement, cutting two pieces of quilting cotton per pocket. These measurements will depend on your jacket. Cut a half inch diagonal off the top of each piece so that the bottom will hang straight despite the angle of the welt. Press the fusible to the wrong side of the strips, leaving 5 eighths of an inch on top. Once fused, I trim the strips down to 3 eighths of an inch on either side of the fusible. And here is where I realized that I should have done all my marking and cutting on the glue-free side of the fusible. So everything I've done is backwards. So let's do it again. Cut strips of fusible and trim down those quarter inch angles again. This time marking on the smooth side. Mark a line 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom of the fusible. Cut strips of fabric and press the fusible to the wrong side of the fabric, leaving 5 eighths of an inch on top. Trim to 3 eighths of an inch on each side and then we're caught back up. Pin the welt to one layer of pocketing. Make sure to pin the top edge of the welt to the straight edge of the pocket with the slant side pointing downwards.
stitch by machine with a quarter inch seam allowance. Press the seam open, then fold the welt back using the top edge of the fusible as a guideline. With the welt folded back, pin the welt to the pocketing at each end of the fusible, making sure to ease the welt in slightly towards the center. This will give the welt just a bit of extra space to make sure the pocketing edges are covered when the welt is turned to the right side. Now, machine stitch at each side going past the fusible by a few stitches. You should back stitch at the top folded edge, but not at the bottom edge. Slash into the pocket at the bottom of the fusible, making sure not to clip any stitches. Trim the seam allowance down to one quarter of an inch and notch the corners. Press the tiny seams open. I don't have a point presser, so I'm using a wooden dowel and being very careful not to burn myself with the steam. Turn the welt right sides out and press flat. Here are my three welts. If you have them on both sides of your body, make sure you make the matching ones opposing angles. Next, we move on to actually installing the pockets. Cut three strips of pocketing, two inches by six inches, with the length on the grain. The lengthwise should be very stable, with the short side having a small amount of give. This strip reinforces and stabilizes the pocket stitching. On the wrong side of the jacket, I have my pocket placement marked. Draw another placement line a half inch below, and place the bottom edge of the pocketing strip on the lower line. Mark the original pocket placement line on the strip of fabric. With a wide running stitch, hand base the pocketing to the jacket on this line. Repeat for the other two pockets. Place the welt face down on the right side of the jacket, lining up the original 3 8 line from the beginning of the instructions with the pocket placement line we've just basted through. The welt should be upside down at this time, with the visible interfacing pointing towards the top of the jacket and the welt pointing towards the hem. Baste along the pinned line with large running stitches, then machine stitch along that same line, back stitching at each end. The second layer of pocketing is added now, and first I make sure that both layers will face the same direction when they are eventually placed together. The second piece of pocketing is placed under the welt seam allowance. Mark 3 eighths of an inch in from the ends of the previous stitch line. Within these marked points, stitch on the pocketing next to, but not on, the welt seam allowance. On the wrong side of the jacket, mark between the two stitch lines on the strip of reinforcement. About one eighth of an inch from the end of the shorter line, mark prongs from the center line out to the end of each stitch line. Using some very sharp snips with nice pointy ends, clip into the marked line. Cut through the reinforcement and the wool layers. When you get to the prongs, it's very important to slash all the way to, but not past the stitch lines. If you don't clip far enough, the pocket corners will pucker, but too far and you'll have a hole through the front of your jacket. Pull the pocketing to the wrong side, and your welt should now face the correct direction. When you press the pocket seams, you want to make sure this triangle is pressed away from the opening. Flip both pocket pieces up and press open the seam that attaches the welt to the jacket. This is a very important step for having a neat looking pocket. I've also pressed open the top, but that one's less visible. Press the pocket flat from the front. Normally I'd use a press cloth, but this fabric isn't really affected by the iron. Base the front of the pocket closed with a large whip stitch, so we can finish the back of the pocket. Now on the back, trim the reinforcement down so it doesn't extend past any seams and is generally more tidy looking. To anchor the welt to the jacket, the sides get stitched down from the wrong side of the jacket. 
I take my first knotting stitch behind the reinforcement through the wool and back side of the welt. Continue stitching through the reinforcement and through the back of the welt, making a diagonal stitch down and then back up so the finished stitches cross over each other. Here's the finished stitching. It should look like a row of little X's. These stitches should not be visible from the front side of the jacket. Last, we'll finish the pocket bag. First, trim it down so the two layers are even and they don't overlap in any seams or hems. Stitch one quarter inch away from the edge of the pocket bag, back stitching at each end and rounding the stitch around the corners. There's the outside of the pocket. And then it's covered in thread because this black fabric just sheds like crazy, but we'll fix that later. Um, and then there's the inside. And then you want to make the corners of your pockets rounded because then it like doesn't take as much stress on the corners if you put anything in it. I'm not actually going to be putting anything in these pockets because they're so tiny and I don't want to like mess up the shape of it like it'll look lumpy if i put something in the pocket so won't be doing that but good thing to do when you are making actual functional pockets hi baby bat you sitting on all my fabric pieces yes the last thing i'm doing before fitting is hand basting the sides center back and shoulder seams together All right, so this is fitting number two, I think. Um, this is my first fitting in actual fabric, and I think it looks pretty good. I do kind of look like I'm about to take tickets and give you popcorn at the movie theater. <laughs> um, but it'll look less like that when I have sleeves, hopefully. Um, yeah, I look a little silly, but that's all right. This will eventually be black like the color is supposed to be, and there will be a facing that is black, but you know, right now, we are working with the top layer of fabric and I haven't gotten anything else on here and that's fine because this is just a fitting. It might be a little bit tight just because I was, what I tried on the mock-up, um, for one, muslin is a very thin fabric compared to this wool. So just the nature of wool being thicker, it is taking up more circumference around my body. Um, I also was trying on my mock-up with like uh, basically what I'm trying the shirt on over, uh, which is just like a thin thermal layer to keep me warm <laughs> rather than over a whole button up, which also adds some bulk. Um, so important things to note when you are doing mock-ups or just when you're doing your first fittings, you wanna be wearing the garments that you'll be wearing when you wear the actual like whole outfit. And then you also want to have a comparable fabric that you are testing stuff out with. And I'm trying this without sleeves first because the sleeves will really change depending on how everything fits. I didn't wanna cut a whole sleeve uh, not knowing if this was gonna be correct. And this looks like it is, right? Um, let's see, this seam will end about here. Uh, and that's a little bit past my shoulder, but once I get some shoulder pads in here, I'm just gonna use very, very thin shoulder pads because I don't want this to raise up at all. Um, but it'll just help fill that little bit out. The back looks really good. I'm very pleased with that. It's kind of bumpy right now because I still have a full two inches of seam allowance on both sides. Um, so there's like a whole lot of bulk in there, but that'll get trimmed down uh, in, the, in the end. So it looks like it fits the curve of my back really nicely, which is great. Yeah, so everything seems like it fits. I might just let out this side seam, uh, maybe just even a quarter inch on each side uh, so that it does meet nicely without any extra strain. A quarter inch is pretty good for guessing how much ease I would need to go over this shirt. Uh, so that's not too bad. Um, but everything looks good, so I actually won't be changing much. 
All right, that is where I'm gonna end this video. Um, I think we've covered quite a lot and I don't want this video to get too long. So um, part two will be covering a lot of the pad stitching. Super exciting. If you learned anything, let me know in the comments if you want to see more different styles of pockets or if there's anything that you think I missed in this process so far, please let me know. I would love to answer any questions and make more videos about suit making, which I'll be doing anyways. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for joining me. I hope to see you in part two and we're gonna be spending a lot of time together doing lots and lots of hand stitching. <laughs> Bye.